everyone, welcome back to another Make It Meaningful video. I'm Garden Girl Jen Gallagher. So all this month we're going to talk about daily life. What a great subject to cover. You have lots of photos, whether it's on Instagram or at photos that you're taking during the month. Summer has started and you're probably taking a lot more photos because the kids are around more. So great subject. This week in particular we're talking about inspiration. Now today, without giving it away, I have been inspired by the product line that I used. And there's a certain product within this page that inspired me to create something on my own. So I took the product, was inspired by it, and then by using the same colors, the same design, the same style, I recreated something else on my own page that fit right in, and if I hadn't pointed it out, you might not have realized that I'd created it on my own. So a clever way to be inspired is to look at a product line and a specific thing. It might be a sticker, it might be a title, and think, how can I recreate this or add to this design so the project has a cohesive look to it? So let's go ahead and get started. So to create the layout, we're going to start with the Bella Boulevard pattern paper that has cameras on one side and cameras on another, but one is tone on tone. And then we're going to take a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock, which I've cut down a little bit to fit on the page. And the first thing I want to do is this particular page is going to bring in the hot trend of fuchsia pink and a navy. And we're going to add a navy border to the side of the white cardstock. You'll notice that this scallop border does not run the entire length of the page of white cardstock, and that is fine. That's exactly what I want. Then before placing it on the page, I'm going to add some of that fuchsia pink cardstock. Now I used a manual die cut machine to cut this file folder shape, but I do know that in the Silhouette store there are several options for file folders. Basically you just need enough that you can tuck behind the top of the white cardstock. So I'll attach this at the top. We're just building some fun layers. And I cut it just enough that it would be a slightly shorter than the width and the tab would also stick up. And then from here we can add the entire piece to our layout. And we're going to off-center it on the left side of the layout. To the top of this border strip I'm going to take an older sticker sheet from October afternoon and it has some blue navy stickers and I'm just going to try ones until I find one that fits and I'm going to use the beautiful sticker. So look through your stash and see if you have some stickers that you've been hanging on to that might fit your project. At the top of the project I'm going to be using some 2 by 2 inch squares from Bella Boulevard and this is where the inspiration for my layout came in. And I'm going to do some fun things to some of the cards. And these cards are double-sided, so you have the option of using either side. Now here's where my inspiration came in. Once I saw these cards and this fun journaling block that they created, I knew that I wanted to create my journaling block. So I went on to Photoshop, and you can do this in Word as well, but I matched the navy as closely as possible. I created the text box in navy, the text in white, and then I changed out just one of the words and I tried to match it to the fuchsia pink. So the inspiration from the products inspired how I would do the journaling on this page. So we'll start by attaching some of these squares and I typically try to start with my center square to get a feel for the proper centering for the layout. And then from there I start building my grid. and you can space them the same distance apart so that the grid looks the same on all sides. So eyeballing it here. An easier way to do this is to actually use grid paper because then it is ready to go. Now when I'm creating a grid, whatever distance I keep here, I try and maintain at the bottom. So when I place the next piece down, the grid has the same distance between the vertical and the horizontal lines. 
Now while I could just use these squares as they appear, I actually am going to decorate them just a little bit. I'm going to start with some sequins on this Adorbs heart, and I'm going to attach them with some glue dots. And you can use the size of glue dot that you need depending on the size of the sequin. That gives that space some shimmer and shine. To this upper space, I'm going to add a rub-on, and rub-ons are making a fun comeback. I'm using one from Studio Calico, and then you just need a surface that you can rub with, whether it is a popsicle stick. I had a paintbrush handy. Just make sure. Sometimes, depending on the rub-on, you can also use your fingernail. And you just want to make sure that the entire piece is rubbed in. Sometimes you can tell when you're rubbing that it is adhering, but what I like to do is carefully peel away to see what pieces aren't necessarily sticking. And then I burnish it with my finger. To the top of this, I want to add a little bit more embellishing, so I'm going to add a button tied with twine. And I'll trim off the extra pieces of twine here. I'll give you a peek at what it looks like up close. So you can see just by embellishing it adds a few things. Then I wanted to use this fun clothespin from Crate Paper. However, when I placed it down, it's just too bulky. So this is when I start to make things my own. I just gently peel away that bow and now I can attach it with a regular glue dot and it's not as bulky. So I'm not afraid to take an embellishment I've bought and alter it to fit my needs. Across the bottom of the layout, we're going to take one of the 4x6 journaling cards and I'm going to use this as the frame for my photo. I'll leave a little bit of space between each thing. And then on top of that, I'm going to use a 3x4 journaling card. This is a very teenager page with these bright, fun colors. Then for a unique border, I loved the concept of the heart. So I took a standard heart punch. We do have this in the two-piece store. And I punched from bright green cardstock to match this green here, three separate hearts. And that is what is going to form my border. So we'll start by placing them down. And I'm going to slightly tuck it behind the three by four card. Keep adding them. So you can use whatever punches or die cuts you have on hand to create a border. So try something different. See so if you have a hexagon, you could create a hexagon border. You could create a diamond border. Lots of different options there. And then across the top of that, to bring some of that yellow back, I am going to add a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to adhere this. So I need a little bit of scratch paper in case my adhesive goes off the edge of the yellow cardstock. I don't want it going on my page. I'll tuck this at the bottom. And then across the top, we're going to do a much thinner border. And we'll cut that slightly less wide. Again, scratch paper to adhere, add adhesive and adhere it. Saves the page. We'll tuck that behind, just leave a little bit of gap of green peeking through and you end up with a fun border. Then the photo is just a photo of my daughter and you'll notice that I added a brush, it's a word brush to the bottom of the photo. And I just picked a random everyday photo of my daughter as the theme this month is every day. And the hearts are barely visible behind her, but that is okay. To the top of the border, I'm going to add this fun fringe black and white striped flower. And it looks like the adhesive's gotten a little dry, so I'm going to add a glue dot right in the center there. And then to the center of the flower, 
a white button tied with twine. Just adding lots of fun textures and elements to the page. Kind of dress it up. Then at the top here, I want to add some pink washi tape. Lots of layering and different textures to make it kind of fun. Rip off where I need it. And then layer it a little bit more with the secondary tape. So it's just kind of random looking. I want it to overlap just a little bit more. To the photo, I'm going to add this fun, it's a paper clip with a heart. This is from Evolicious. To the corner, top and bottom corner, I want to add some craft, and I'm going to bring that in with some photo corners. You know I love my photo corners. Again, Canson, C-A-N-S-O-N, carries these. You can cut them with your silhouette, or you can even use a square punch. To the 3x4 card, I wanted to add a few hearts, so I'm going to take some from Studio Calico, and we'll add them with glue dots. with chipboard I have trouble getting it to stick if I peel it away from the actual backing so sometimes I'll put the glue dot down first just creating a nice little thing and then for the title I'm going to use the punky on the 3x4 journaling card but I'm also going to bring in a white die cut that says youth for some tone on tone and again we'll use our little piece of scratch paper fold it in half so I don't get any of the old adhesive on this cut and then using a glue pen we'll paint the adhesive on and then we can adhere it to the journaling card so a page like this comes together quickly because I've used a lot of pre-made items and that makes the process easier. The other thing is the inspiration came from the two by two journaling cards from this collection. So anytime you're looking for inspiration, look at shapes, look at color, and look at design and see if you can mimic it for something like your title or your photo or wherever on the page you think you can add a concept that matches what you're already using. So thank you for joining me for today's Make It Meaningful video. Be sure to subscribe to the Two Piece YouTube channel so you don't miss out on this Friday weekly series.